Hi, I'm Zach Lovett, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to use a simple expression to create a trailing or following object in After Effects. Let's go! Expressions are a motion designer's secret weapon, and once you learn to use them, you can save yourself huge amounts of time and pain. If you're ready to gain a thorough grasp of After Effects expressions and how to use these powerful tools, check out Expression Session from School of Motion. You can also download the project files I'm using in this video to follow along with or practice with after you're done watching this video. The details are in the description. So let's say we've got some text here and we want to create a really cheesy, retro, staggered animation thing. All right, so this is what we've got so far. Pretty good. I know. So one way to kind of stagger this would be to duplicate the layer, open up its keyframes, take them, move them down a little bit in time. We're going to duplicate the layer, open up its keyframes. Or let's just move these ones down a little bit in time. Duplicate the layer, open up the... <sighs> okay, so wait, let me just do it. I think you're kind of getting the idea. This works, but it's really annoying. And now if we want to go and change the original animation to be, you know, a different shape or have the keys somewhere different, now we've got to go do that whole process over again for each of these child layers. That sucks. Thankfully, with the power of expressions, we can create a pretty simple rig to help us out through this. The premise is still the same. We're going to duplicate the layer and offset the keyframes, but we don't want to offset the keyframes by hand. Luckily, we can use an expression function called value at time to help us with that offsetting. The way we're going to do this is to first duplicate the layer like we saw. And for clarity, I'm going to rename this, let's say, child layer. Maybe call it yellow. And underneath the position, I'm going to delete these keyframes out. Because we don't want it to have its own keyframes. We want it to look at the keyframes of this layer and then offset it in time. So I'm going to delete those just by clicking the stopwatch. I'm going to hold Option or Alt and click on the stopwatch to get this expression set up. So from here, the first thing to do is to pick whip right up to that layer's position. Now, if we click away, nothing's happening. Well, there is actually something happening. Our child layer is just following the exact same position as the main layer. So I'm going to actually make this child layer, let's make it a different color. So now we've got the main layer, which is gray up top, and the child layer, which is red below it, just to make it a little bit easier to see. Now, what this expression is doing is giving us the value of this layer's position at the current time. But if we want the value at a different time, we can write dot value at time, put in little brackets, and click away. OK, well, we're getting an error. Errors aren't scary. They're pretty helpful and can help us figure out what we're supposed to do. Up here, it says value at time needs exactly one argument, right? Well, we've got these little brackets, and inside of them, it needs an argument. That's what it's called when you put something in the brackets. The argument that this function needs is the time at which you want to get the value. OK, so easy. There's actually this built-in keyword in After Effects called time. And what this word means is any time the expression sees this word, it's going to replace it with the number representing the current time in the comp. So let's click away, and nothing's really changed. Let me just go to one second in time to kind of explain this word time. So as I said, this word really means a number. Well, because the current time in the comp is one second, this word time is actually one. And if I put it up here, it's 2, and here it's 3, and maybe midway, it's 2.5. And OK, that kind of makes sense. But how come we're not seeing anything different? Well, that's because we've just told the expression to give me the position of this text at the current time. Well, getting at the current time, that's the same as not having any of this. Like, this is the current time. Parenting is the current time. So all of this isn't doing a lot. Well, OK, then how do we use this? What we want to do is offset the time that we're giving it. So instead of the time right now, what if we were to say, give me the time a little bit ago? Like, what if we said, give me the time half a second ago? 
well, we just went through and said that this number, this word rather, is really a number. So if we're at 2.5 right now, how do we get to 2? Well, we just say, you know, time minus 0 0.5 will make this number 0.5 smaller. Or it'll give us the time half a second ago. So if we click away here, this red text is now super offset. This function, this expression is saying, give me the value of that position half a second ago. So as we scrub through, first the gray moves, and then half a second later, the red layer moves. And it's following that. And what if it's not half a second? What if we say a quarter of a second or 0.25? It's going to do the same thing, just a little bit closer. Now, one way to sort of visualize this is to open up the graph editor. In the graph editor, you probably know that we can click on position, and we're going to see the x and y curves as they're curving there. And I'm just going to click this button here to lock it, so that's always showing inside the graph editor. Now, if we come down to our child layer, we're just seeing these horizontal lines. That's because it's just showing the actual animation of the x and y, which, well, there isn't any. Helpfully, though, there's this little button here saying show post expression graph. And what this will do is show us the x and y position after the expression's been calculated. So that's a little bit easier to see in practice than just talking about it. So I'm going to click this. And now we're seeing a second set of curves after the first one. I get there's a lot going on here. But the idea is that the second set further to the right is the same as the first, but a little offset in time. I'm going to go ahead and change this value from minus a quarter second to minus half a second and see what happens to the space between the curves. So it's actually made that gap bigger. It's the exact same path, just offset in time. All right, let's get out of here. Turn these off, back to our main comp. So now that we've got this working for one layer, let's add another child layer and see it offset again. So I'm going to duplicate the child layer. And, oh, well, nothing's actually offsetting. So let's go into the position of both of these layers and take a look at what's happening. Well, both of these have the same position value. They're both offset half a second from the main one, but they're the same as each other. Now, this has to do with how we're telling it what layer to look at for the position. In here, we're using this word layer with brackets and then quotation marks and writing main text. This is how we're targeting what layer to get the position of. Now, there's a few ways you can use this layer function. The first way is like this. You put in quotes, the name of the layer, and it's going to say, OK, give me that layer's position. Well, you can also put a number in here. If we put the number 1, that's going to say, give me layer number 1 in the comp. Now, OK, well, what's layer number 1? That's this number right here. Under the number, it's the layer's index. The index is just the layer number. All right, so if we say layer one and click away, it's still getting the same thing. This comp.layer one is the same as this comp.layer main text, and they're both just pulling this. All right, so we're kind of getting the pieces here. Remember how back here we're saying, give me a value time and offset it a little bit, time minus 0 0.5. Well, what if we could say, instead of give me layer number one, give me the layer before this one. Well, to do that, we kind of need two pieces of info. First, we need the current layer's index. So how do I get this number two? And to do that, we're first going to say the word index. Just like time, the word index is a handy keyword that'll give you this as a number. So in this case, it's two. And to get the layer before it, we're going to say minus one. So altogether, we're saying, give me the layer whose index is one before the current one which in this case is index two minus one is one. And it's the exact same thing. Where this really becomes useful is when we put it on the next layer. So I'm gonna copy this and drop it into here. And now we're getting two copies. The idea here is that this layer is looking at layer number one and then offsetting half a second. This layer is looking at layer number two and offsetting by half a second. And the more layers we duplicate, the further back in time each subsequent layer is going to be. So as we duplicate, well, nothing's happening because the animation hasn't started that far back. But if we play forward in time, we're going to see each of our child layers kind of cascading out from the center, doing their little wiggly animation. 
and then coming back home. To actually see it finish, we need more time at the end here, but you get the idea. Or actually, let me just shift this up. So they kind of move around, they wiggle, and eventually come and close. So the last sort of piece here is that this half a second delay is a really long time. Now, I just want a simpler, cleaner way to organize this so that if I want to change this value from 0.5 back to a quarter second or a third or something else, or heck, even animated, I can do that all in one spot super easily. Now, to do this, we're going to create a little controller. And I'm going to put that right on this main text layer just to kind of keep it all compact. I'm going to go into the effect controls for that main text layer. I'm going to right click go to Expression Controls, and choose a Slider Control. This I'm going to name Time Offset. And this is going to be the amount of time to offset each layer from the one before it. I'm going to say minus 0 0.5, which is minus half of a second. Heck, let's just say 0 0.5. It'll make the numbers a little easier. I'm going to lock this so that we're seeing it always, and it's not going to disappear. I'm just going to go ahead and delete each of these child layers. Because the expressions are the exact same, I know that I can just reduplicate them to get that same effect. So deleting and reduplicating is just a little faster than modifying all these expressions one by one. Now, to get that number into this value here, I'm just going to take the pick whip, drag it up to that slider. It's going to add in a bunch more text in here. And for now, don't worry about it. As we click away, well, nothing's changed. At the beginning, you can see that it is actually offsetting by that amount of time. So let's go and duplicate this a whole bunch. And we're seeing exactly what we were seeing before. However, because they're all looking at this slider, we can change this value down from 0.5 to maybe 0.1. And it's going to make that offset much, much tighter than it was before. With this technique, you can create super complex rigs all based on your layer stack and a few handy dandy sliders. Now that we've got this all working, we can drop it into our rad as heck scene and watch it go. This technique is super customizable and we've only scratched the surface of what you can do with it. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want more tips like this one and check the description so you can download the project files from this video. If you want to dive into the world of expressions with the help of experienced industry pros and fun real world challenges, Check out Expression Session from School of Motion. Bye-bye.